Hey everybody, it's Daniel. Welcome back to another episode of Spain to Go, the best podcast in the entire multiverse about all things Spain. Once again, this is Daniel, or as usual, this is Daniel. I'm coming to you from the beautiful city of Barcelona, and it's December. Time to talk about some of the holidays and the holiday traditions so that you can celebrate like a real Spaniard. So actually, this time that I'm recording this is a long weekend, and it's a long weekend that's always a little bit strange because we have the 6th of December and the 8th of December are both holidays, which means there's the 7th of December, which is not a holiday. A lot of people just take the 7th off anyway, and they have a five-day weekend or something similar in the middle or at the beginning of December, and then they have a, another week off or two at the end of December. Spain is good for going on long holidays, at least compared to um, a lot of countries like, like the United States, where going on holidays for a couple of weeks is a rare thing. Anyway, now Christmas is in the air. It looks like we're having sort of a minimal coronavirus situation this Christmas. So, so far, everything looks good moving forward. And I'm going to help you navigate some of the typical Spanish Christmas traditions. So, here we go. Eight things you need to know about Christmas in Madrid and Spain. Number one, they celebrate Black Friday now, and it's four days long or more. Back in the day, we had a little bit less in the way of U.S. sort of traditions in uh, Spain, but now Black Friday has definitely arrived. Black Friday's expansion in the U.S. has not gone unnoticed by savvy Spanish marketers. You can raise and lower the prices of objects and uh, goods now, with more freedom. Back in the day, there were obligatory rebajas that were sort of mandated by law, and they could only happen twice a year. That law has been changed over the last several years, and people can put things on sale whenever they want. So Black Friday is catching on. However, they're not really attached to the concept of Friday because nobody's celebrating Thanksgiving anyway. So sometimes they have it just be any point in late November or early December. At this point, everybody understands that Friday is only meant to be one day, but nobody apparently cares all of that much. So sales can be all weekend long from Thursday to Sunday or even longer. So one of the pharmacies in my neighborhood was celebrating Black Friday this year, pharmacy of all things guess you could stock up on some discount lotion or something. And some shops even had signs up for what they were calling Black Month. Because why not? The whole month of November, apparently, they had sales. The second thing, once we're done with Black Friday, is that the city center, you might have noticed, is very crowded. The city center in most places gets very crowded during Christmas. In the evenings and on weekends, it can be absolutely packed. In past years, they've come up with new ways of getting the police to guide people in ways that does not create huge crowds, but it's still pretty crazy. In Madrid, you have Cortilandia, which is a big display of lights on one side of the Corte Inglés, lights and robotic cartoon characters that sing songs which is a typical thing for Spanish families to take their kids to see. It's on the side of, of the Corte Inglés between Sol and Opera. So you can prepare for thousands of kids and parents waiting around for the animatronics if you go to something like that. It's quite an experience, and it's definitely not for the agoraphobic. Of course, the craziest part is on the 30th, or the 31st of December, when they have the Puerta del Sol, they have the sort of Times Square experience, the 12 ringings of the bell in Puerta del Sol. 
Of course, this is all dependent on uh, coronavirus canceling things, the government canceling things because of coronavirus. I'm not exactly, exactly sure what's happening this year. But in previous years, there has been the 31st, New Year's Eve, where they have the whole Spanish Times Square thing. On the 30th, they actually test the bells, and that's just as packed. You can go and you can um, have the same sort of party as you would on the 31st, but one day early, because a lot of people are with their families on the 31st anyway. So check that out if uh, conditions permit. It can be kind of fun. Otherwise, it's on TV all over Spain. Anyway, number three is the national obsession with turrón and shellfish. It's interesting. Back in the day, I used to uh, give English classes, and people from different countries would all have very different ideas of what Christmas food was. I remember a couple of Portuguese girls who I had as students who said... They can't imagine Christmas Day without cod. Cod, for me, is not a very uh, Christmassy food at all. Here in Spain, the Christmassy foods are shellfish, ham, turrón, things like that. And in the past, there used to only be two kinds of turrón. Turrón is what we would call praline. It's an acquired taste, I suppose. But there only used to be two, ki two kinds, hard and soft. Now there are dozens, and you can get all kinds of price ranges. Um, there's a very typical place in Madrid called Casa Mira at Carrera de San Jerónimo, number 30. It's been there since 1842, and they're a boutique version of, of um, Turrón. You can get anything at Mercadona if you want. You can go to the Corte Inglés and get something a bit more expensive. There's all kinds of options. You can also check out polvorones and mantecados, which are two lard-based or not vegan-friendly, in other words, uh, sort of pastries from Andalusia. I don't think they're that good, but once a year you can go nuts on all kinds of lard-based sweets. The shellfish, especially prawns, seem to be a big deal. And some of these things are regional in different parts of Spain, but there's a fish called a besugo, which a lot of people might eat. It's sort of a more expensive, I think it's a sea bass. So prawns and sea bass for Christmas are uh, definitely more common than at other times of year. Up here in Catalonia, they have a type of stew, I guess, which is called escudella which is basically a couple of meatballs in a cocido madrileño. You should never tell Catalans that their typical food is like cocido madrileño, but it is. Um, <laughs> I made it last year. It actually turned out pretty well, but it's the kind of thing that you uh, only eat once a year up here, I think. They've got in the butchers, they sell the meatballs pre-made at this time of year. The fourth thing that you should know about Christmas and the holidays in Spain is the Christmas lottery madness. In any big city, and potentially some small towns, you might have noticed at this time of year the long lines outside of the lottery uh, resellers. You might also notice that your coworkers have sort of a lottery ticket that they're all playing together, your barber shop or your local bar or your your even your butcher might have a lottery ticket that everybody who goes regularly is buying the same lottery ticket. I've got a whole article about how this works. It's kind of a long story, but people play the same number, so you have social pressure to play this number because you imagine when when I was working uh, at a Spanish company, I imagined always all of my coworkers winning the lottery because they were all playing the same number and me not winning because I hadn't bought a ticket. And it was almost enough to get me to buy a ticket. In the end, I think I've only done this once, but the Spanish would go and they would buy a ticket at, at work and everywhere else that they go during their, their week, you know, the gym, 
They would buy the lottery number from the gym, and you know they would have a whole series of tickets. Anyway, it's um, just sort of a way to waste money, or if you prefer, donate money to uh, the different organizations that are supported by the lottery, which actually support good causes. So it's a traditional sort of traditional sort of thing that uh, people are going to be doing. The fifth thing you should probably know is about the 12 grapes on New Year's Eve. The 12 grapes are a big tradition that supposedly comes from just a uh, oversized and later in the year sort of grape harvest one year that they thought, hey, why don't, why don't we come up with some way to sell all of these grapes to everybody in Spain? And they decided, hey, let's I'll eat 12 grapes on New Year's Eve. It'll be good luck. And so, yeah, essentially, Spanish people don't even believe that other countries don't do this, but at the 12 ringings of the bell for midnight on New Year's Eve, everybody will stick a grape in their mouth on every ringing of the bell and then, you know, try to not choke on these grapes. Of course, you can these days get the grapes that are pre-peeled and easier to swallow in a lot of supermarkets. They'll sell you like a tin of grapes or something like that. And yeah, like I said, the tradition goes back many decades, at least to the beginning of the 20th century. So be prepared for that if you've got a Spanish person in your uh, New Year's celebration. The sixth thing that might surprise you about Christmas and the holidays in Madrid is the Cabalgata de los Reyes. The Reyes Magos, well, the Reyes Magos are my next point also, but this is the three kings, the three kings of Orient. They celebrate here Epiphany just as much as they celebrate Christmas. So this is January 5th, I believe, the afternoon evening of January 5th. A lot of towns do a sort of Epiphany parade where they have floats, they have the three kings, the three kings of Orient, Gaspar, Melchor, and Baltasar. So, this has been a little bit controversial in previous years, because for the longest time, the tradition was to get a local politician for Baltasar, the king who comes from the east, I believe. They would get a local politician, and he would paint his face black, and, uh, you know, he would be disguised as Baltasar. There's been some controversy over this, because painting your face black is not as popular of a tradition as it used to be. Some people are offended. Some people have pointed out that there are plenty of people in Spain these days who could play that role without painting themselves. And so recently they've been hiring, you know, actual people of color, let's say. However, you know, for the longest time, it was sort of an uncontroversial thing that you would have a local politician in blackface. Now it's a controversial thing, but we'll see. In some places it has changed, in some places it has not. In any case, it can be a fun experience for the kids to go out and uh, get some candy thrown at them by different disguised people or costumed people. And sometimes there's even, you know, animals and stuff like that in these parades, which is kind of fun. About the Three Kings, well, you might not know that the Three Kings are actually bigger than Santa. Here in Spain, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, I remember when nobody was celebrating Santa Claus. This was just a, a U.S. tradition that's been, you know, imported through the movies and all of that. They've always been celebrating the Three Kings. The Three, the three Kings, of course, come down your chimney if you have one, but most people don't. So they will come in through the window of your flat on their camels and they will uh, bring presents for the children because that's, this is what they did for the baby Jesus back in the day. And so, yeah, the three kings will, will come to your house. Families will leave water and carrots for the camels and I believe wine for the three kings. 
you know, leave it out like you would leave cookies for Santa Claus. And yeah, that's uh, just sort of their traditional thing. Now, a lot of people are celebrating the Christmas with Santa Claus and also Epiphany. Kids are okay with it because they get double the number of gifts. Marketers, of course, are okay with it because they can sell more things. And uh, that's that. Some people think that something traditional is being lost, but, well, that's life. The last thing about the holidays in Madrid that might surprise you is that they never seem to end in the U.S. A lot of times I seem to remember that we would be back in school on January 2nd or something like that. But here, they wait till after the 6th of January. So sometimes it's even the 7th or the 8th by the time anybody is back in school or back at work. It's kind of a long two weeks, and the Christmas decorations stay up after New Year's, of course, because they're still waiting for Epiphany. On the 6th, a lot of people will celebrate with a Roscon de Reyes, which is a sort of ring cake with uh, whipped cream or something similar in the middle and some dried fruit, candied fruit on the top. It's not bad. You can have that with some kava and some more prawns. After that, on the 7th of January is when traditionally the rebajas, the sales, would start. Like I said earlier, now there are sales at different points of the year or any time you can put your things on sale in your shop. So the rebajas being a you know wild party on January 7th is another tradition that's not quite as important as it used to be. But you can look out for that in a shop near you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little walk through Spanish holiday traditions. I hope you enjoy your December and January. And, uh, well, as they're saying around my neighborhood, Bon Nadal, Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, and uh, all of those things. I guess we'll have more episodes soon. I don't publish too many of these, but I do think about it a lot. And I want to get on a more regular schedule in the new year. So perhaps we'll be hearing from each other more soon. Of course, you can go by expatmadrid.com and you can find a contact form there where you can email me if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for this podcast, anything you would like to hear about on this podcast. I'm uh, fairly happy to work with you if you uh, have any great ideas for new episodes. So yeah, that's expatmadrid.com. And uh, there you also have about 500 articles, many of which are about Spain and Spain-related topics. So Enjoy that, and Merry Christmas. We'll talk soon. Bye.